Carpets are an ideal choice for creating a warm, welcoming and timeless look and feel for your home. Today we're going to show you how to fit carpets on your stairs and landing. Before we begin, it's important to know what the different parts of the stairs are called. The basic components of stairs you'll need to know are the tread or step, the riser and the landing. Your stairs may also have bull nose, which is a larger step with a slight curve that is sometimes found at the bottom of staircases. It's important to take accurate measurements of your stairs, and the method for this will vary slightly depending on which type you have. For standard stairs, you will need to measure the riser, tread, and the width of each step. For winding stairs, you'll need to measure the winders individually, meaning the stairs that make up the bend. For these, you will need to measure the widest point, meaning your tape measure won't be perfectly parallel to the step. You'll also need the tread and riser measurement. For this, your tape measure should be placed at a 90 degree angle to the edge of the step where it's deepest. Then measure the other standard stairs as before. Certain staircases will feature a bullnose. To measure this, take the tread and riser as you would on a standard step but also include a measurement which goes all the way round the bullnose at its widest points. You'll also need to take measurements for landing and hallway spaces too. When measuring your hallways and landings, take the widest width and the longest length as you would a normal room, but don't forget to include the riser of the top step in your measurements. If your hallway is L-shaped, you're likely to have quite a bit of waste. Take as many measurements as possible so you can get an idea of what will be left over and whether the offcuts will be suitable for use elsewhere. You can measure any middle landings in the same way as your main landing. Make sure to include the measurement of the riser for the step below. To get started with fitting carpet on your stairs, you will need the right tools. So let's take a look. Hacksaw and small headed hammer to cut the grippers to size and attach to the subfloor. Carpet trimmer, to cut carpet to size if you're not using a knife. Row finder and carpet cutter, used together to get a straight cut in the carpet. Staple hammer, to staple underlay or carpet to the stairs. Gripper shears, for cutting the carpet grippers at an angle. Mini crowbar, for removing old grippers. Or, used to grab onto the carpet. Pincers, to remove any nails or staples from the subfloor. Rubber mallet and bolster, to drive the carpet onto the grippers. Carpet tucker and speed cat, to tuck the carpet into grippers. Duct tape, used to join the sections of underlay together for a secure fit. Straight blade and concave blade, both being used to cut the carpet and underlay. Carpet stretcher, tool being used to stretch carpet into position. And straight edge, to get the correct measurements and a straight cut. Carpet fitting does involve a lot of kneeling on hard surfaces, so we'd recommend you wear knee pads or use a cushion, just something comfortable to kneel on throughout the process. Before any carpet fitting can begin, You'll need to remove the old carpet from your stairs, starting from the top and working your way down, making sure you wear heavy duty gloves to avoid danger from staples embedded in the old carpet. You'll then want to check for any protruding nails, staples, screw heads or old grippers and remove them to make sure the stairs are flush and you're working with a blank canvas. Once you've removed everything, check for any surface defects that may need repairing. Finally, give the area a thorough sweep and vacuum. Grippers work to keep the carpet taut and securely in place, so it's important these are installed correctly. The angled pins on the gripper are sharp, so make sure you wear a decent pair of durable gloves when handling them. 
As you can see from this section of grip we've got here, the pins are pointing in one direction and we have a smooth and a rough edge. The reason for the rough edge is when we've took that carpet down, it adds a little bit more grip to the carpet. So the pins in a normal room will be pointing towards the wall. On our staircase here, the pins are pointing to the riser and on the top ones are pointing down to the tread. Now it's come to installing the grippers on the staircase. When installing grippers, we need to wear gloves and our safety goggles. Um, the grippers here, the easiest way to cut our grippers would be with our gripper shears here. If you don't own a pair of gripper shears, you could always use a hacksaw. When installing the grippers on the rise and the tread, we leave two times the thickness of the carpet gap and that's what we're gonna tuck the carpet into. Now it's coming to fitting grippers in a room or the landing here. Same thing, we need to have goggles and gloves for safety. So we put those on. When we're installing grippers around a room, we leave a six to eight mil gap. The reason for that is we want to get a nice tuck finish with the carpet. If we have too big a gap in the gripper, your carpet will just ramp down like that. It doesn't get a nice neat finish. So here, we, we want to follow the contours of the wall as well. So with our gripper shears here, I want to get an angle. And then we'll leave that six to eight mil gap using our small headed hammer. We don't want to use a big hammer because the problem with big hammer is there's a chance of hitting the skirting boards. I always go from right to left because I'm right-handed, it's easier to hold this because then I can adjust the gripper along the wall. Because as you can see here, we've got a slight curve in the grip and the uh, skirting boards. So we do that around the perimeter there, but here we always have to follow the contours of the wall. So we've got another piece. So we're going to go here. We don't want to go over the top of that because we're not going to be able to tuck in the carpet. So leaving that six to eight mil gap. Same here, we cut our angle. So that we're getting a nice, neat finish. As you see, I only put two nails in there, which isn't enough. We want to make sure that the grippers are fixed correctly. And especially near the edge, you only want to be about 10 to 15 mil away from an edge of a gripper. So using our ring shank nails, when we're using wood, we wanna make sure we've got good fixings near the edge as well. Now it's come to installing the door bars. So what we need to do is make sure we get a correct measurement between the two door frames here. So the measurement is actually in between those two gaps where the door actually sits onto when it's closed. So I'm gonna transfer that measurement onto our door bar here. The one we're using is a dual grip one. So it has grippers on both sides. So we've got carpet on both sides of this door. So I'm gonna transfer my measurement onto here. We've gotta make sure we do an exact measurement here because once I've cut this, if it's too short, obviously we're gonna be wasting that door bar we don't want to see gaps at the edge. It's always better to measure twice and cut once. So I've put my mark there. If you're not 100% sure, you could always go and re-measure. So now, I've got my gloves on. Make sure you put your safety goggles on when always cutting. We're gonna use our hacksaw here. When starting off, just make sure you get that I've used my thumb just to guide the blade where it should be and then obviously I take that away so I don't cut my thumb off. Nice slow movements, not trying to force it, let the saw do the work. Now, we, we want to be able to put the door bar in but when the door's shut, the door should sit across the top of our door bar. So what we use now is our metal shears and we take a small section 
away from each corner on one side only. So we do that side and this side. We don't do both sides of the door bar. Now it's come to actually installing the door bar. The reason I took off those two sections with our metal shears, so when the door bar goes in, it's tight in between these two door jams here. If I didn't cut those away, we'd be sitting too far away from our door jam. So we lift the carpet up from this side, placing the door bar in. And the reason we're doing this now is because when I come to fit the grippers here, I need to know where to take my grippers up to. So to install the door bar, we use our ring shank nails again and our small headed hammer. So as you can see here, we've got the holes pre-drilled for us, ready to put the nails in. So we just work our way across. Be careful that you don't bang into the top section here and dent the door bar. We'd work our way across that side and the other side. You've got to make sure that you've got a nice strong fixing because you don't want the door bar moving. And this door bar's ready for us to tuck the carpet into. Now we've installed our grippers, it's time to install the underlay. But first we need to tidy up, so we need to have a sweep around, make sure there's no loose bits of grippers, nails or staples, which could cause any lumps and feel uncomfortable underneath the underlay. The underlay we're going to be using is a PU underlay. There is different grades of underlays, um, which help with acoustics. So you've got different decibels from different underlays. Um, underlays do have TOG rating, so that gives you different warmth in the room. And obviously if you have underfloor heating, you have certain underlays that you need to use, which actually have a low TOG rating to allow your underfloor heating to work. And different thicknesses. So the different thicknesses, you'll get different feel, comfort, um, depending on what situation and what room we're going to go into. Now it's coming to cutting the underlay for our stairs. What we'll do is cut across the width of our underlay. It's the most economical way of getting the most amount of use out of our roll of underlay here. When cutting, I've got my carpet scissors here, but most scissors, as long as they're a reasonable size, would cut through your underlay. In terms of cutting the carpet, you'd need a heavy duty pair of scissors. So here, I'm just gonna mark my width of the staircase. I'm just gonna do a line here so I know what I'm cutting. I'm just going to take my scissors and just take a small section just so I can rest my straight edge in there now so I know where I'm cutting. Measurement the same this side. And because I don't want to damage the floor underneath, I'm not going to use a knife. I'm just going to mark with the pencil So I've got a line to work along. So using my scissors here, just gonna work along the line so I'm not damaging the floor underneath here. So the piece I've just cut out here, that would do about three to four steps, depending on the size of your stairs. And then I'll do the same process as I go down the staircase. In terms of in a room, I'd work out the most economical way of using my underlay, but we want to eliminate as many joins as possible underneath our carpet. In terms of measuring our stairs, I'll measure the width of the stairs and then I'll be cutting that off the underlay and then installing that. In a room, we roll the underlay out and then we cut it off and then we'll roll it again for the next section. So when we install our underlay, we're going to use a staple hammer around the perimeter to staple and fix secure the underlay because it needs to be secure so it doesn't move underneath the carpet. If I was on a concrete floor, we'd either use a double-sided tape or a spray adhesive only around the perimeter to obviously secure that underlay. When we have joints within the underlay, we don't use staples to hold that. We actually use a duct tape which holds the underlay together because we don't want that coming apart underneath the carpet. When installing on a landing, 
you always want the underlay to be secure over the step. So I'd start from the step, work my way along the longest distance, and then a short bit here, separate. When we've installed the stairs, we always start from the top and go down because we have to make sure the underlay is tight. If I went from bottom to top, it's a lot harder to get the underlay tight. When installing the grippers in a room or landing here, I would probably take the underlay over the gripper because the walls are not straight. So I don't want to try and push it against one bit of the gripper because it could leave a gap because I want that underlay tight. So I'd install the underlay over the gripper and then cut that away to reveal the gripper. So the underlay needs to be tight up against that gripper. On a staircase, we start at the top, we work our way down to the first stripper, we cut that off and then we work our way down, staple that across and then pull it down tight, staple, cut it off, so we're getting it going down the step. Now we've installed our grippers and underlay, it's time to take the measurements um, ready for cutting our carpet. So I've done all my measurements, I've done a plan here, so I've got all my different measurements of the stairs, the landings, and I've done myself a little plan here so I know what part of the carpet I'm going to be cutting for the stairs and the landing. When cutting the carpet, there's two ways of doing it. I use a row finder and a carpet cutter. We can also turn the carpet the opposite way round and use a straight edge and a knife. So I'm going to show you how we're going to cut the landing out here for using our row finder and carpet cutter. When installing our carpet, we need to make sure we know which way the pile is going on the carpet. We can use our hand to rub our hand up and down, you might see the shade difference and you could feel the pile, but that's not always that easy on every carpet. So a little trick of mine, using a pencil or our row finder, I've got a note here, and all I do is rub my pencil over the note and you can see it now moving, so it's showing us that the pile's going this way. So on our staircase, we're gonna be doing the stairs up here, and on our landing, the first step needs to go down, so the pile needs to go down that first step. So we need to make sure when we plan the carpet, we're including the pile going down the stairs. Now that we've got our staircase, it's time to do our landing here. So keep referring to my plan to make sure we've got the measurements correct. So we're gonna just mark out the first section. We know which way the pile's going now, so the pile's coming down here. And from my plan, this is where the step is, so we know the pile is going down the step. So we get our measurement here. using our row finder. The advantage of using a row finder, if you do actually go offline, you can just rub that out, because all I'm doing is opening the pile ready for cutting here. So once I've done a, using my row finder, and you always just need to double check our measurement. So now we've gone up there, we're gonna check the other measurements we're gonna cut and mark. So as you see here, I'm starting to make the shape of what our landing's going to be. It's actually harder with the row finder to go across the pile. You just have to be steady with this section and always just keep double checking your measurements. Top tip. It's always best to allow 100 millimeters around the edges just in case the walls are uneven. So when using our carpet cutter, it's not about going quick. Obviously, the more you use it, you get used to it, but slow and steady, all I'm doing is looking at the line, because I've got the line of this metal, I'm pointing it down our line that the row finder has given us here. When I'm cutting carpet, I'm always using a concave blade, because I find it a lot easier to keep control of the knife using a concave blade. So now I've started myself off, I can get my carpet cutter in here now. Slow and steady, just watching along that line. Same again, I can see where the blade is here, so I'll just take that to the corner. I might be able to turn this here, so I might be able to do it with our carpet cutter, but as you can see, that's quite difficult. So to make life easier for myself, using that concave blade, just starting myself off, and then I can go up this line. So as you can see here now, we've got the shape of our landing and it's going up there. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cut our quarter landing here. So if you haven't got a row finder 
and a carpet cutter, we can always use a straight edge. I've got a straight edge here or a long bit of metal, or if you've got your door bars, they act as a straight edge as well. So I'm gonna take my measurement here. I'm just gonna mark on the back of the carpet. We always do it on the back of the carpet when using a straight edge and a knife cutting. It's a lot easier to cut. So I've got my measurement there. Here. So what we've got here, I'm gonna put my straight edge on my two marks. So what I'm gonna do is just mark it with a pencil and use my scissors to cut this today. So using my scissors here, obviously we always wear gloves when using knives or scissors. Just nice and carefully, just looking at that line. We're just gonna cut through the carpet. Another way, we could always lift the carpet up and cut through if you feel confident enough that you're not gonna damage the floor underneath. So I could do that here. I could lift the carpet up and cut through. But obviously if you don't feel confident enough to do that, you can just use your scissors. When I'm cutting the pieces of carpet for my stairs landing, different quarter landings, I need to make sure I know which piece is for which section. So all I do on the back of the carpet, just to reference, it could be a number as long as I referenced on a paper. Here, this is our quarter landing. So for me, I'm just gonna put quarter land, then I know what section this is for. So whatever you remember, whether it's numbers or write on the back what it is. So you could write stairs for the staircase. Now we're going to install the carpet on the stairs. I'm just going to show you some of the tools that we're going to be using. We're going to be using our rubber mallet, our bolster. The knife we're going to use is our concave blade one here. And to stretch the carpet onto the grippers, we use our knee kicker or carpet stretcher. When setting the depth of the pins, we, need, we don't want those pins to go through the carpet into our underlay, damaging the underlay. So what we do here, we set the pins so they just go into the backing. As you can see here, they're just going into the backing so it's not gonna penetrate through the back of the carpet and damage the underlay. So when installing our carpets, the underlay, we started from the top and pulled the underlay down. With the actual carpet, we start from the bottom, we go up along the tread and then up the riser and along the tread. The reason for that is we can get a lot better tension with stretching the carpet into the grippers. And then we just keep working our way up, making sure we've got good tight tension on the carpet. On our very first step, we always leave a small section because obviously they might go off at angles, stairs, different sizes. So we have a little bit of excess. We start there, we tuck that into the gripper between the two gaps we've left between the gripper. And then we start from there, tuck it in and stretch off of that. When using the carpet stretcher, we obviously make sure we're holding it tight. And then with our knee or the, our thigh, we can push the carpet onto the stairs. On a normal room, we'd use our knee, we'd be flat on the floor and obviously kicking that into our grippers to make sure we've got nice tight tension. So we're stretching the carpet onto the grippers. On a staircase, sometimes you might have to use your thigh depending on your position on the staircase. When fitting the carpet on our landing or in a normal room, we'd use slightly different tools to what we've done on the staircase. So we still use our carpet stretcher and the knife we mentioned with the concave blade but we use a speed cat. This is for when we're going across the wall. So when I'm stretching, we run the speed cat along the wall at the same time, and that helps keep the carpet onto the grippers as we're stretching it. If you haven't got a speed cat, we just use our hands and work our way across the room. So when we're stretching, we're making sure the carpet is grabbed onto the grippers. When it comes to cutting the carpet after we've stretched both all the directions, as we stretch the length of the carpet before the width on all our rooms, we would be going to cut in. So we can use our concave knife. An easier way of cutting along a wall without damaging your skirting board is using our carpet cutter. It has two blades here, so I can go in left and right direction. And we run that along the wall and that leaves enough left on the carpet so that we can tuck that in that six to eight mil gap we left between the gripper and the wall. And that gives you a nice tuck finish and a nice neat finish at the edge of the wall. 
The method we're using here is stretch fit. So we're stretching the carpet onto our grippers. This would be used in most domestic situations or in commercial situations. But another method is double stick. And that's where we stick the underlay with an adhesive to the floor, the subfloor, and then the carpet gets stuck to the underlay with another adhesive. This would be used in commercial situations where there's lots of heavy traffic or where there's wheels going on it, office chairs, wheelchairs. It gives a more stable situation in those commercial areas. Now we've come to the end of the job, we've finished fitting the carpet, it's really important that we tidy up after ourselves, clearing all the mess into bags and then hoovering the carpet so when you're presenting it as a floor fitter, the customer's happy when they're walking and see a nice clean carpet or for your own benefit if you're doing it for yourself, you've got a nice clean carpet. Also it's important when you're hoovering, you might not be able to see little threads when you're fitting it so you can see as you've hoovered if there's any little threads you can cut them away so we've got that nice perfect clean carpet at the end of the job.